are talking about the natural hair takeover. And clearly there is a movement. And I was talking to Ashanti the other day, and I was just like, I wonder if it's more of a movement or trending. And that's what my concern is, because I believe in people learning to embrace who they naturally are because we've been so conditioned to want to mimic someone else because, you know, the standards of beauty don't look like us. Right. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we are conditioned to want to embrace something that is not our natural selves. So I see these trends, and just like you see the trends of... Uh, plastic surgery and all this kind of stuff to look more like us. People pumping up this and pumping up yeah. that and you know what I'm saying, all of this kind of stuff. Right. To look like us, but when it comes to this part, we are still conditioned almost like we should not be proud of our hair. Exactly. So let's go in from there. Um, I'm going to get to you guys because I want to spend a little bit of time with you all, with you all but uh, so, Lara, tell us, when did you take your journey into the natural life? Huh. Um, okay. It's been as long as I've known you, but I know, since, like, at what stage of your life? My daughter, <clears throat> at the time, I can only do it by age because I can't tell you the year because okay. I don't remember. My daughter is, uh, my oldest daughter is 17 right now. Mm -hmm. So, I went natural when she was five years old. Okay. And the reason why I did that is because um, it's just... I, I always used to tell her when she was little, like, your hair is so beautiful, and don't you ever do anything to it, you know, because I'm, I'm building her up. But I kind of felt like a hypocrite because she would watch me put the cream and crack on my head, mm -hmm. you know, every time I needed it or whatever. So one day um, I left the house, and my cousin was watching her, and when I came home, the front of her hair was straight because she had put the cream and crack <laughs> in, front of, in the front part of her hair. And that was the moment that I made my decision to go natural, and I chopped all my hair off, started over, and it just kind of went from there. Okay. Okay, so, Ashanti. Yes, ma'am. How long have you been natural? Oh, it will be my uh, seventh year anniversary in May. Tell us the journey. Ooh. Tell us about the journey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I have pretty much got a perm from the age of 12 to 22. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we always used to get our hair pressed. Um, <coughs> you must have three, uh, two sisters, so it's three of us. We used to always get our hair pressed. I really never, like, knew what my texture, mm -hmm. you know, was like or what have you. My mom used to always get it pressed because it was each had three girls and, mm -hmm. and, you know, not putting anything down on her. But mm -hmm. I can only imagine having to do three heads in your own every day. Mm -hmm. So she used to get our hair straightened. And then when we moved to Texas, we were from Louisiana, moved here, and when you know they asked uh you know what would you like to do to your daughter's hair and she said like, i want to get it just pressed out and the lady just looked at her like we don't do that like mm -hmm. it was hot because it was hot she said it'll heat up my whole salon or whatever we do we'll, we can perm it mm -hmm. and oh. so and my mom just kind of was like okay you know and i didn't you know, i don't mm -hmm. know you know so how old were you 12. Mm -hmm. i was 12. and so that's when i got you know the perm and it became normal mm -hmm. to me it was like a routine and mm -hmm. you know and i just got that's it just what you do yeah that's just mm -hmm. what i had and then you know i remember you know touching my roots my hair like oh mm -hmm. like i need to get a perm like yeah. it's you like touch it yeah it's like <laughs> this is like nappy you yeah. know and then so, um, and then I'll just, you know, just, but I'll be excited at the same time because of the new growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, With my hair growing. Right. But it's nappy. So. <laughs> right. You know, and so anyway, so, um, you know, it just became normal. But as I got older and then I had my first, we had our first child, um, I noticed my hair was really stringy. I was, it was falling out after the baby and everything because, you know, it's all good when you got the prenatal right. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> then when, when that joke come out, you know, <laughs> my hair was just, you know, it right. was a mess. And I, and, and, you you know, and then Reginald, he was like, why don't you, because he didn't really like, like, not like, but he wasn't just in love with the straight look. Just about every guy I dated before, they love straight hair. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, I used to come home, be like swinging my hair and stuff, and I'm like, you know, like, and he, he wasn't getting excited, he was, I'm just not a fan. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, okay. <laughs> Okay, this is a different one. Like, I don't know this. Yeah. 
<laughs> so and he said, "Every time we're going natural, and I'm natural, you know, mm-hmm. what is that? And now you're addicted. So. Yeah, you know, what is ten right. years? You know, yeah. you know, every every six to eight weeks, mm-hmm. ten, you know, right. whatever. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, um, then I started doing some research. At first, I was like, I can't. What am I gonna look like? You know, I'm gonna look a hot mess. <laughs> like, you know, because you're saying I, to me that equated nappy and unattractive because standards. I, the yeah." I don't know. That's just what, and in, in my family, like the older women in my family, that's what they would say. You know, mm-hmm. you need to learn, you need to go get a parent. Yeah. You know, that was yeah. the thing. Um, so I, I, I did, then I just started, I said, hmm, I was like, looking at my hair, it's falling out and stuff. I said, oh, maybe I need to do something different. Like, I never thought to mm-hmm. go natural. Mm-hmm. Then I started, like, just YouTube, looking at stuff up. And then I found YouTube <laughs> with the <laughs> whole community and everything. <laughs> yeah. And I just looked at, like, 24 hours of just different videos on how to style it and different things. Like, And then I was finally, like, went to him. I was like, I think I can do it. Yeah. And then I saw I just started the transition. And then it was seven months into it, and I was like, I can't, I'm, I can't deal with the two textures. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy, right? Exactly. So my sister, you know, she braids or whatever. She does my hair from time to time, and she was over the house, and uh, I said, "Girl, just cut it all off." Mm. And she was like, "Are you serious?" Because my hair has always been like, you know, my mom. Back. Yeah. Mm. And um, I said, "Yeah, I can't do this." She said, "Are you sure?" She kept asking me. <laughs> I said, "Let's do it." And then he took a picture. And I, I, like, my hair was three, like, three inches long from, you know. The part, the relaxing? Yeah, from, like, BSL wow. all the way just to, like, this long. Wow. You know, like, pretty much a little bit shorter than yours. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, and, and so then I just kind of, I was depressed. How did you feel? Oh, you felt, yeah. A little, at first I was, like, liberated. Yeah. And then the next day I was depressed because I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like. Right. <laughs> like, we did that for real. Right? <laughs> My, yeah. yeah, and I was depressed because I didn't feel feminine, you mm-hmm. know. Like I, and so I got the big earrings and yeah. stuff like that, and I mm-hmm. didn't know what to do with it either. Yeah. You know, there's still little pieces of perms, and you know, she just kind of cut it. Yeah. When I didn't like get it done professionally. <laughs> <laughs> You know, through the whole process, you know, before the process kind of started, he was like, you should document this. You should, you know, and I'm like, I was like 22, so I was like, no, like, <laughs> I can't, you know, I, I was, you know, afraid yeah. of what trolls and all that stuff, and I didn't want to yeah. put myself out there. Yeah. And he just kept telling me, he's like, I'm telling you, you should do it, and I should have listened. But anyways, so I just kind of, you know, I, I've dealt with uh, one of my family members telling me that I look like a monkey, like, right mm-hmm. after I did it, an older, res- respected mm-hmm. family member. And I was just like, I, and another, uh, so my mom, I was like, mom, do I look like him? She was like, no, baby, it's okay, you know, like kind of <laughs> thing. And he was so supportive of the whole process. If he wasn't, I probably, you know, I, it would have been a longer. Like, oh, my God, yeah. I did. I cut my hair off. I have no hair. My husband doesn't like it. Yeah, and, yeah. but he didn't make me feel, That's good. like, unattractive or anything like that. Sorry. He didn't make me feel like unattractive or anything like that. So it really, like, helped the process. And I'm like, I know that I'm not, like, the only one going through mm-hmm. this right now mm-hmm. because you're scared because you don't know what you're going to look like, you know, and then that didn't help, you know, with my relative saying what she said. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now she's like, oh, girl, look at all that so pretty hair. hair. Yeah, look at that, you know. And then I, that's what I tell young, younger girls now, younger women, um, look at, like, their hair. Mm-hmm. You know, you got somebody with patches in their head trying to tell you about, yeah. <laughs> you know, from healthy hair. hair. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's just like, even though, I mean, you know, you kind of have either it's, you respect them but at the same time you don't take advice mm-hmm. from certain people that don't have what you mm-hmm. desire mm-hmm. you know you just kind of kind of look at that objectively right. right um so yeah and then you know we just kind of we were uh, working on the last film 2013 you know and we did our premiere at the angelica and we just had a, a just what a, film was that that was it's, it's, it's called com- it's complicated oh, okay that mm-hmm. okay. was a relationship film okay. that was a drama Okay. Yeah. So we were having our meeting uh, about that, and they were like, so what are we doing next? Mm -hmm. And then the idea came back up, why don't we do a a documentary about natural hair? And then we just started. We started November 2015. That's when we started production. Okay. And tell, tell, um, Reginald, tell us a little bit about that. Like, what was that journey? How did you... How did you guys um, decide what to do, how to do it, and then what did you learn in the process? Wow. Okay. So... The idea has been around since about doing the documentary since she chopped her hair. She just wasn't really ready at that mm-hmm. time. Um, it was around 2013 where we kind of started talking in the meetings, um, our producers meeting, talking about the movies, and the idea came up again. And we were just like, 
the timing is kind of off just because we're finishing these other two movies. Mm -hmm. um, we started around this time from 2009 up to 2015, we started seeing more of the natural hair in the media. Like you start seeing more, like kind of like the mixed girls coming out on the commercials, mm -hmm. more actresses are wearing their natural hair, mm -hmm. more famous people starting to wear natural hair. It's like, okay, if we're gonna seriously talk about doing a movie on the subject matter, probably the timing is now mm -hmm. uh, because it is starting it's to- It's trending. It's starting to become a trend now mm -hmm. versus like, hey, this is what I'm deciding to do in the, with my lifestyle. Now it's becoming a trend. Mm -hmm. So if we want to capitalize on this, now was the time to do that. So we just had a couple of meetings. It was like, you know what? We haven't done a documentary mm -hmm. before. <laughs> so it's a, it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. So we just said, hey, we're just going to start reaching out to anybody that's been through the whole process of going natural. They've always been, there's different mm -hmm. stories. So we just started just reaching out to people in November um, and saying, hey, come to our studio and we're going to just start recording mm -hmm. your, and documenting your story. And as we started doing that, uh, it kind of led us to a, just like a rabbit hole of other people saying, hey, you need to talk to this person. Mm -hmm. You need to talk to this person. All right, let's start talking to like professional people. Mm -hmm. Let's start talking to uh, historians mm -hmm. about the whole subject matter. And that's kind of where it's led us all the okay. way up to now. That sounds amazing. I can't wait to see that. I want to know, um, have you, do you have any men in your documentary? Yes, we do. Good, because I kind of feel like the <laughs> men are kind of jumping on the bandwagon too. I mean, well, I think with the men though, it's probably more of a um, of a trend. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say it, because when uh, men, you know, they they keep their hair short. Men usually mm -hmm. keep their hair short. Now you're seeing a lot of men with the twisties, mm -hmm. and they they're growing locks. Like the young boys, they're yeah. growing, they're they're getting locks mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, they mm -hmm. getting extensions. They're mm -hmm. trying to get them locks. Right. You know? right. <laughs> and um, and then they're growing their hair really, you know, mm -hmm. loud and twisting it up, or they letting it dread up on top. Like mm -hmm. they're they're really embracing, embracing that. Yeah, look. they're embracing the whole mm -hmm. natural look. They they are embracing that. I, I always said that you know, man, I was for the most part, have been natural in some, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether they're going to froze out wearing, different styles. wearing braids yeah. and, and, mm -hmm. and the dreads and everything like that. Yeah. But as far as like embracing women that are going natural is a whole different subject. So when we interview the guys, we we're talking about relationships. Like, Ooh. what do you really think about women going natural? That's kind of like the conversation because when we interview the women, they're more like, well, my dating experience has been very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, mm -hmm. I've dated guys that don't like the natural, they just want a straight look, but they're a lot more afraid to say that, you know, they just don't want to have that conversation with a woman about her hair. So <laughs> you guys have come across more men that really do like the straight look more? Wow. Like just a real <laughs> honest, like... Mm, they're kind of, they're, a lot of them don't want to talk about it, mm -hmm. but um, the people that we've interviewed so far, they and they encourage the women to go natural. They've been, hmm. they've been very encouraged. I wonder if it's because of the the people that you're drawn to or what is the actual because people in my world mm -hmm. are all going to embrace yeah. natural because that's my world right but i wonder like outside of my right. four walls what are people mm -hmm. yeah right and yeah. i think um i if i would just throw a number out there i mm -hmm. think still more guys probably prefer the straight look but in our world, of course, more people right. are going to like exactly. the, the natural look. Yeah, but according to the women that we've <coughs> interviewed, a lot of the guys that they date are kind of leaning more towards the European look. Hmm. Vincent, what do you like more? Are you paying attention? You're not paying attention. Do we catch you up? I <laughs> 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 think about his response. <laughs> Answer carefully. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. You're the only male in here, so outside of Reginald, <laughs> you all get side. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm a fan of, of the natural look, uh, but I, I also am one of those that say, if if you know if you don't decide that's what's best for you and your look, then I'm okay with that too. So that's a safe uh, response. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because I'm gonna ask a more direct response. Okay. okay. Would you talk to a girl who has very coarse hair? Yes. Okay. Yes, I believe, you know. I'm one of those, if it looks good on you, then it looks good. So I've seen people that straighten it and do this, and they look a hot mess, like you were talking about. And I've seen people who look a hot mess uh, who are natural. So you can look a hot mess just because you're just not taking I'll care. treat you like I do with the other interviews. How, how does your significant other wear their hair? Uh, I've dated women that 
is the natural look but you don't always get that you know <laughs> you don't always get it but if, and if I don't get it if it's what makes you feel better because you never know what people have going on with their scalp or what's falling out and what might be there what might not be there so you know I can roll either way pretty much if it's what makes you feel good then I feel good about it so as long as she's nice to you hey you just happy to win yeah just happy to win <laughs> good answer good answer <laughs> out, okay, Ashanti. Yeah, I'm gonna help you today. <laughs> tell us about. Um, give us some. Give us some of the. What can we see in the movie? What can we expect to see? Oh my goodness. Um, what you uh, expect to see? We have an interview with um, Isis or Brantley. Yes. It's, uh, some of you. I mean, I don't know if you're audience, mm-hmm. but Dallas. Um, you know, it's her being a historical figure here. Just mm-hmm. you know doing natural hair care. They mm-hmm. tried to criminalize that. They put mm-hmm. the woman in prison for doing natural hair care. Mm-hmm. Right. Cosmetology license used chemicals. She wasn't using chemicals. They put her in jail because of that. Brady. Brady. <laughs> Brady. Now you're right. using chemicals. Right. So we actually have ISIS mm-hmm. in the documentary. This is history that, you know, people mm-hmm. in Dallas need to know. I'm not from Dallas, but I live here. I call this my home now, and this is was new to mm-hmm. me. Um, we also are going to have stories from young, you know, African-American and uh, biracial uh, girls Mm -hmm. their perspective from 9 to 17 of what they think is beautiful and Mm -hmm. how they feel and how, you know, from school and things of that nature, Mm -hmm. like what, you know, their perspective of things. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that I, and I I know we talked about a little bit with Jamie, Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that I want to do is I don't want to kind of shun the next generation. I want to hear from them. I want to mm-hmm. know what's in their mind, what makes them tick, and also like just kind of make bridge that gap as well. So that's why we're adding that because this film, for me, is for the next generation. Mm-hmm. I want them to um, understand and know there's nothing wrong with you. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong with this society and this, this trying media. to change you exactly to make you think there's you need to change. There's nothing wrong with the way that God created you, <clears throat> right? And mm-hmm. that is what I want them to get from this film. We're going to also talk to individuals that have dealt with um, their career, career issues as far as some people believe, yeah, as far as advancing and things of that nature that has been an issue. So we're going to talk about, we have some real dialogue in with the men as well, what they believe, because there's one dude, he was kind of, he went in a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. as far as, you know, and like, <laughs> some other producers like, we're going to tone them down, you know, we're going to have to add a little extra, because, yeah. But we, I, I want the realness. There's so much fake stuff that's mm-hmm. out there in the world. Like, people want to be politically correct. You know, I, I tend to, I don't know, in my personal space, like, shy away from those people. Yeah. I want to know, like, the real. The real. Like, yeah. what do you Makes really sense. think? Yeah. You know, so um, we have a lot of real conversations mm-hmm. in here. And mm-hmm. just pretty much talking to women, I mean, students, musicians, uh, entertainers, you know, talking about their experience, you know, through the journey. Also, KG Lifestyle, she's in the in the film as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it. We have a couple more things we're working on, trying to get ironed out. Also, you want to talk about Kickstarter? So Kickstarter. So we um, started our Kickstarter uh, fan page. Is it a fan page? Campaign. Yeah, the campaign. There you go. <laughs> uh, on February 1st. Uh, you know, for Black History Month. Y'all wish y'all go. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was pounding the pain. <laughs> yeah. I was, we both, we, yeah. everybody was. But yeah, I was, we were going hard. I was not so. about to get embarrassed on the internet. No, nah, yeah, okay. that's a public, that's public. <laughs> yeah. so, uh-uh. um, so we started that February 1st. Right now we're at five more days before the campaign is done. But so you've already hit. Yeah, we hit our, we hit our goal, but we're still raising money. Good, you know, good, good. We're, um, Raise the box. Our goal, <laughs> <laughs> our goal was $10,000. Right now we're like 11300 okay, something right, like that. Right. Um, awesome. So we're still campaigning, um, and uh, we got five more days. Good. So yeah. just go to Kickstarter.com, type in Natural Hair the Movie, with the first one that pops up, Documentaries. Yeah, And it's also on the Black and the Berry page, because yes. we've been promoting it as oh, well. Oh, so I appreciate that. that. Yes. Most appreciate definitely. that so much. Most yes. definitely. Wow. But you got, and we will repost it so it's at the top on the Black and the Berry, as well as High Vibe, so that we can make sure that we support. Because that is what we are about, is making sure that we do our part in supporting um, individuals that follow their dreams and we with that. Yes. We like that. Sure. I also <laughs> wanted to do a special shout out to Curls. Have you, the the product natural hair product company Curls. Mm-hmm. I reached out 
to 75 mm -hmm. different natural hair product lines. They sponsored this. They helped to sponsor this film. Oh, good. Oh, wow. So if Maisha, if you're out there, thank you so good. much. I, I mean, we you know. We definitely appreciate it. Yes, we do. Tell oh us gosh. about their, they have a, a product line? Yes, Curls. Um, it's curls.biz. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's pretty much a natural hair product line owned by a sister. Mm -hmm got to represent. Yes, so yeah, right. so she's in, I mean, Target, CVS, um, I mean, and then a lot of uh, different uh, major mm -hmm. retailers as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm just excited. And they're actually, uh, they have their office in Frisco. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, so in, uh, they'll be actually, so if you, if you go to the premiere, you'll get a bag, a curls bag, and they'll have their samples of products there. So, y'all yeah, definitely want to make sure y'all make it out to cool. the premiere. Yeah, so we'll keep you updated on that. Yes, August, do. August, this August, August coming up. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, Good I want to shout out. Do you know where you're doing it at? We're going to go with the Angelica Theater in Dallas. Okay. Um, that's where we had our It's Complicated movie mm -hmm. premiere, mm -hmm. and we enjoyed the whole event. So mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna to do that's that good. there as well. Yeah. yeah. Good. Cool. Yes. I'm excited about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aren't you yeah. like, we got to bring our girls and make it a date night or something. <laughs> that's definitely. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. awesome. Really, real talk. Yeah. So that's, I mean, mainly that's that's the whole, like, idea behind it is that I want to make this for the next generation mm -hmm. of, of girls, you know. And <coughs> I think it's important for them to hear the history, for them to understand. Uh, also, uh, the film, uh, 300, was it 400 years? 400 think, years. 400 years without a comb. Like, one of our producers, you know, he was like, y'all have to look at this film. I mean... If you are out there, definitely check it out. The film is on YouTube. It's free. You can watch it or whatever. But it really, like, sometimes when you hear about the atrocities that happen or mm -hmm. you hear about these different things, it doesn't really resonate until you see it. And so he had reenactments of slavery and how, like, we essentially didn't have the tools to do our hair. Mm -hmm. And there was a scene in that film where this little girl, you know, uh, was getting her hair combed, the slave girl was getting her hair combed by her mother, and it was just like a traumatic mm -hmm. event. It was, you know, she was crying, the mom was frustrated, mm -hmm. and all these different things, trying to use like a European comb. And then when she, the slave mother did the European, the master's daughter's hair, mm -hmm. she would, you know, she was pleased because it was so easy, and the mm -hmm. child, the slave child, mm -hmm. would watch it in, in jealousy, and just like because her mom enjoyed it so much, it wasn't such a hassle. She wasn't screaming and stuff. And when I, and it, and it and then it said in that child's mind, it was something wrong with her hair, and she did whatever she could to obtain mm -hmm. that texture. Yeah. And when I seen that on screen, and you know, seeing the rest of that film, it really made me like realize it made me not want to straighten my hair anymore. Yeah. You know, because it's like the whole reason why we were straightening our hair was because so we can be accepted and be like exactly. like them and be, you know, we weren't the standard of fit in. Mm -hmm. Right. And it wasn't as pleasurable and all that type of stuff. So I'm just like, you know, and he really gets, you know, he gets into it. And when you see it, it's different from hearing it. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I was just like, dang, mm -hmm. you know, like. That's why I'm straightening my hair. Like, for me now, it's more of a length check. Mm -hmm. I haven't straightened my hair in, like, probably a year and a half. So, for me, I just do it for length check, not just for me to... So, you mean straighten as far as just blow dry, like flat, flat iron? iron? Flat iron, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But I, I mean, yeah. it may, that film made me not want to do that mm -hmm. because it's like, why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, but check it out. It's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. It, it really opened my eyes. 400 years, 400 years without, without a comb. Without a comb. Yeah. I'm going to watch that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 400 years without a comb because, and then we get reintroduced to the comb in, like, when, like, the 60s? From, or some, I don't know, when, what the time period. I may be wrong on the date. But we got reintroduced to it later. Later on, with, when um, when the African Americans start going to Africa, and then they found, you know, the utensils that were used readily there, because we were still trying to figure out what to do with our hair, so we start covering it and doing all kinds of weird stuff, putting wax and mm -hmm. all kinds of, just trying to use what <laughs> was available to make mm -hmm. ourselves look that way or try to anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what really concerns me is, um, like you said, just the psychological impact that hair has period on women but specifically on younger girls and um, I was thinking and like you said when, when you had to make the transformation because you keep telling your daughter about how beautiful she is but then you trance you trying to be something that you're not you know so you were like wait a minute now this is something I'm, I'm telling her one thing but I'm living something different in front of her you know and so when we think about and I do agree that there are some things that we could do to enhance ourselves and there's nothing wrong with that um 
But when we are bondage to, you have to have the makeup on your face, you have to have the lashes, you have to have um, this and that and the other, you have to straighten your hair, and you gotta, you know what I'm saying? It's like all these things that we're doing just to compromise who we are. Mm -hmm. Because somebody didn't tell me it's okay for me to be this. You know what I mean? And even like you can do things like, and not just for a health reason, then that's different. Even like the plastic surgeries and all of that kind of stuff, I get it if it's for a health reason. But outside of that, when we don't take the time to love ourselves in our authentic form, that doesn't mean that you cannot work to do better, um, you know, especially when it does come to health and you know things like that because even your hair care you know that's that's a health that's tapping into a healthy lifestyle because what you don't want to do is just get up and go and you don't you, you there's no upkeep that's that's a stereotype with natural people yeah. and it's a very offensive one too mm -hmm. that just because your hair is natural or because you wear an afro or you have locks that you know you kind of dingy or you know what I'm saying you don't take care of yourself or you yeah. can't glam up or you know what I'm saying or you don't take you know you don't wash it but but what I'm saying is is that we do have to cater to the health needs of our body all the way head to toe but the inside to me is so crucial when it is crucial to me like it is more than just a hairstyle. You are literally telling my daughter that she is not beautiful enough the way that she is, and I have a problem with that. You know, I I have a problem with you trying to tap into her mental mm -hmm. and get her to think like you think or and really to compromise herself because that's what you chose to do for yourself or that's how you want to do for your daughter. Now, I have an aunt who she probably is watching, and she's going to fuss at me. She's going to be mad or whatever. I'll deal with it. But she told my daughter. She was like, if your mama wasn't so crazy, I would put a perm in your hair. Oh. And I was like, I'm glad you know her mama crazy. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yes, let her come home with her hair with some chemicals in it, and I'm going to have a little fit. Mm -hmm. Because, I, but really, you already know. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but really it's because it's the psychological damage mm -hmm. that's behind that to me because in essence it's almost like yeah I know she's tender headed she has a lot of hair and it's thick and we still gonna find a way to work through that mm -hmm. you know because it is a challenge with finding the right products and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff mm -hmm. you know for your texture and to loosen your curl pattern so that it's easier to manage and comb through and all that I get all of that mm -hmm. but what we're not going to do is to say I give up being who I am so that I can be who someone else wants me to be. That's true. Let me yeah. interject for a minute because I think that um, I think in the beginning um, people did kind of fit like people wanted to assimilate to what it, what was I guess norm normal and beautiful, but I think now people are. Um, I think black women are just diverse. Period. Like. We like to switch it up. We like to do different stuff, and um, and I used to I used to be I used to be um, I used to put a lot of pressure on women on black women who wore weave because I just was like why you wear weave you trying to da 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 da, but now I'm just coming to real like it's kind of like a straggling uh, like I'm straddling the fence a little bit because I'm still kind of unclear, but I see some women who wear weave wear wigs. And when they take it off, which they rarely do, but when they do, the hair is natural and beautiful and long. And so I asked them, like, why are you wearing weave? Like, you don't even need weave. But I was like, oh, it's just a protective style to protect my hair. You see what I'm saying? So, and then you have other women who wear wigs and weave all the time and they don't have hair or, you know what I mean? Right. And so they're dealing with, you know, not the doing insecurities. And yeah. And so I just think that black women like to be, they just like to have a different look all the time. Like I know women who, you know what I'm saying, one moment they have braids, they, they don't even have them that long. And I'm like, how you pay that much money for them and don't even keep them that long? Because I just, you know, I can't do hairstyles. Then they got, you know what I'm saying, some other kind of hair going on. And then they got something natural. Yeah. But um, let me tell you a story about my daughter, my seven-year-old. I don't let my children wear weave 
because I, I just don't want to, um, I just don't, I, I think it messes them up in the head a little bit. But my seven-year-old, I decided to put some weave in her hair recently, like literally this weekend. And um, I put some twists in her hair, and I didn't make it really long. I just made it like two inches longer than her real hair, right? And so while I'm doing it, I'm talking to her, and I'm like, Emil, look, you know, I'm stretching her hair out. I'm stretching, I'm putting the weave next. So I'm like, look, your hair is just as long as this weave. You know, I said, the only thing is, is that, you know, your hair shrinks up, you know, because I keep her hair braided. Right. I was like, it shrinks up, right? And so while I'm doing her hair, she's like moving her head because she's feeling the hair on her neck, right? And her whole little personality is changing. Like, she's just feeling cute, okay? <laughs> and so she like, Mama, when you going to finish? I'm like, I'm not going to be able to finish today. So I put it all up. Oh, what a weird day. I said, I'm not going to be able to finish today, okay? So I did a little bit more, and then I let some hang down and put the rest up, right? And so she's walking around the house, like, literally feeling herself. <laughs> now, whenever I do a, her, her real hair and twist and have some hanging in the front, you know, she shake it or whatever. But this weave is a whole different attitude. That's true. A totally different attitude. And so I want to say that as a parent, it's kind of like... You have to find a balance with your children because the only reason why I put the weave in her hair is to prolong her hairstyle. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason. Not to make it longer, not to make her look more beautiful because I think she's beautiful anyway. It's just to prolong her hairstyle because I have to do it every two weeks. And, you know, yep. my hair, yep. I, I don't do my oldest daughter hair anymore, but, you know, just doing hair, I don't like it. Right. So I put it in there to prolong the hairstyle. And I told her that because, you know, I like for her to know what I'm doing. But we as parents, we have to set, you know, certain examples for our children. And I think a, a, the reason why a lot of children, like children wearing a straight weave in middle school, I think that's totally unacceptable. Because if, if twists, we, like, it's the kinky hair twist, y'all. If that is making my baby, like, feel extra beautiful, can you imagine what she would feel like if she had straight weave, you know what I mean? So right. can you imagine what that does to a 12 and 13 year old? It did me like that at 22. <laughs> <laughs> I had weave for like twice in my life and one was my wedding day. And I was kind of... <laughs> I was. She was like, like, like that natural girl. <laughs> but she was beautiful, I'm sure. Yeah, I had it in. When I took it out, I was kind of like, whoa, you know, because it was, you know, yeah. longer and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it does something. Right. See, like, I don't know. But it's, it's like funny you, yeah. you went, you know, you described that. <laughs> because I, I remember feeling like kind of just like, hmm, what am I going to do with my hair now? And I see why women get it, like, uh, addicted to it. But the, I didn't wear it anymore after that. Yeah. But I was kind of like, damn a little bit afterwards, <laughs> you know, for about a week. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was like, I, I was related. She was seven and I was grown. So it was like, yeah, I would yeah. say pay attention to what they're looking at. Like, look at the people that they see on television. Uh, the people that they listen to music wise like think about all these women yeah what do they look like because that's what they're looking up to uh, the women that are the leading actresses and the musicians who are these what do they look like I, and yeah. that's where they're getting this from exactly I agree because well I, I, I kind of I prevent my daughter from looking at a lot of different stuff and then the people around us are natural like everybody in my family pretty I can't I can't think of one person in my family who has a perv. Mm -hmm. So I That's know good. that the image is but I, it has to be school. You mm -hmm. know, she goes to a um, multicultural school. So she's seeing all different kind of people, you know? Mm -hmm. What so, are the what are her peers saying about <clears throat> her hair? I don't know. Let me ask you this though. Question. Um because sometimes I'm concerned with this with myself. Do you think that we're being judgmental though? Because for for us to say I don't like no kind of weave. You know, it was funny because I was going to interject. I felt the same way, like, until I started doing this project. And when I, when I started, you know, and then talking to my sister-in-law as well, you know, because she's a hairstylist, she was just like, you know, sometimes, you know, it's best to have protective style. Some women don't take care of their hair properly, you know, and they may need to go to a, a stylist to get it done on a regular basis, and they do protective styles. Like, um, for example, I know I had this beautiful um, doctor, and I was wondering why is she wearing, like, a weave, you know? And she was like, and she told me, like, her hair is natural and stuff. I was wondering if she works 16-hour days, like, six days a week. And I know me, myself, like, I wouldn't want to be 
messing around with gel and twists and you know and all that I think it's for the woman's like lifestyle I think as long as she's not putting chemicals in it especially the damaging effects of perms mm -hmm. like I think that's I, I, I've become what is it more empathetic to mm -hmm. it you know and, and less judgmental about it because um, some women just don't have time for that like like me with all the boys and stuff that I have I've been even looking at some uh, wigs and Stuff like that, because just simply, <laughs> I mean, I haven't yet because you know <laughs> this one. Maybe like, you ain't keeping it real, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give it a oh, oh, that is natural <laughs> and the baby. Right. Yes, no, but for it to, to save time, but not necessarily. But make it a texture, keep the mm -hmm. texture, but like something that's quick. Because sometimes you just don't want to. Like you are sure you can just get up and just you know you're done. But it's like for I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna start getting kinked. I be going to sleep without my scarf on. You know, then I wake up and it's half everywhere. You know, so it's just like you know. And when I had the, uh, I had some, uh, what is it, the crochet dreads. I had oh. some, and those, you know, I just woke up and I was ready to go. That was mm -hmm. awesome in the morning. So I think, <laughs> I think it's, I think that um, it is nice as almost like an outfit. You know what I mean? Like you don't get too attached right. to it. Mm -hmm. However, I do deal with myself with being um, kind of judgmental because I do feel a certain kind of way and I do think it's wrong, you know, because um, it is okay, you know, when you're switching it up. I'm just concerned about the, the inside of, of the woman more so than even the outside. Mm -hmm. Like, as long as you can do this and it doesn't alter who you are or who you are trying to be, then that's different. Mm -hmm. um, but then I wonder, too, like, even when she was talking about um, when you said you think it's wrong for the seven-year-old girl to have straight weave, well, what's wrong with her mama putting straight weave and you just decided to do kinky twists? Like, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with okay, it. Okay, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> because when you have, when you have more natural looking hairstyles, like culturally fitting hairstyles, mm -hmm. I think you're kind of staying into the to the group of natural hair a little mm -hmm. bit because women because black women are known to add extensions like braids or um, the dreaded braids or kinky twists you know things like that I think you starting to step outside of that when, when you go straight yeah when you go straight because the only I'm not okay maybe that's not an accurate statement but very few black people have straight hair okay so you're kind of stepping into that whole European mindset and then you start because uh -huh, everybody in my family got straight hair literally <laughs> you know and they're probably mixed and that's okay but i'm just saying she, did she just call me not black on the black of the berries did she did yeah. she just do that i said yeah hold up hold up uh, what's black <laughs> yeah there you go that's a whole other conversation your family <laughs> <laughs> you are an extension of them, I know. I'm stunned, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said they have straight hair. <laughs> that don't mean we not okay, black. Okay, I'm going I'm to be quiet. I just <laughs> say you talking. Sounds like you said your berry not all black. Oh, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Shake it. I'm so happy. Because my hair. I need some backup. Um, I need some backup. Okay. Well, my grandma is about, she's, you know, a little bit lighter than this, but she has straight, straight hair. You know, but not a, a lot. But not. <laughs> well, that's why. That's that. why I said I, it wasn't an entirely <laughs> accurate comment. I said not a lot of black people have straight hair. Okay, so will you will you step over into that? I think when I think what she's saying is like when you're trying to be something that you're not. Like if they have straight hair, they have straight hair, you know. Right. But if you have kinky hair, you have kinky hair. As long as you like doing a style that's reflective of your texture and what God gave you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> And see, Thank you. Was, and I heard you. I heard you because <laughs> she got my back. Uh, straddling on the fence, though. I mean, I get it because I totally. I was just like, why are you wasting? Why, why are you wasting? Money? I don't look. Here's another thing. Wasting your spending money, two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars on hairstyles, and you don't own, you know, like nothing. Right. I have a problem with that. I don't care if it's kinky, straight. It's a bad financial choice. Uh, mm -hmm. run, no move. different than tennis shoes. Right. That's two, that's, three, four hundred. That sure. you know. Sure. So I feel that way. That's that's my. You can call me just. I think that is crazy. I think that is insane. Psychological. I, it is. You don't have the. You know. Anyways. So that aside. But I, I, I see what she's saying. Like as long as you're staying within, you know. What God gave you, like so, you're just enhancing it. It's enhancing it. <laughs> it's enhancing. It's enhancing by two inches. 
You're only two inches. Yeah. I'm telling you. It's cool. I'm just saying. I just, and this is for the sake of the conversation. I know. Though, because I know. I know people feel like that. Like, oh, so just because you like the kanky twist, that's okay. But if I put in straight, then that's a problem. But it's all we. But you Which know is what? really true. I get it. I get both sides. Yeah. I, I get both. I get both. And I did stay early. I said, I don't put weave in my girl's hair. Like, I've never put weave in um, my oldest daughter hair. I just never did that. But with my younger daughter, it's, it's like I said, well, I'm just going to put weave in here to prolong the style mm -hmm. of the hair. I understand. I can keep it for mm -hmm. a month and not have to do it, right? But... And that's in, but that was the exception that I made. That's how I talked myself into putting weave in her hair. Mm -hmm. right. But I don't normally agree to children having weave. I just mm -hmm. don't agree to because of how I told you my seven year old was acting because of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have to be mature. Like for yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You got to be mature to wear weave. I think mm -hmm. you you really mm -hmm. have to grow up a little bit yeah. and be able to handle and know it. that that does not define you. Exactly. Like um, what is the who sings that? I am not my hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, that doesn't define you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we talk about that in the, in the actual movie. That we say, is there a, a, a relaxer, a natural hair war? between the women and they actually talk about you know some of those confrontations so there is that it is <laughs> it's a real thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then you, then we also got to define what natural is because you might have a oh, woman yes. that has natural hair but may have some coloring in it so mm -hmm. it's like yeah, it's a debate. So it's, it is a debate yeah, yeah. So, so now we have to define that because it's how different how real for, are you <laughs> yeah, so, yeah so now we got to define because well, it's mm -hmm. different for different people mm -hmm. I think those are people with relaxers just trying to nitpick at people with natural hair Come well, on, we, we got to define natural. it because we got to start somewhere right <laughs> what, is the, what is the definition of it? Because for me, it's about the texture. For me, it's about the texture. Like, I think if somebody, like, for me, when I go gray, you can call me what you want, but I'm coloring my hair. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just saying, when it gets to the point where I'm, like, I'm coloring it. So you can call me in the all you want, but, uh, oh, but I'm getting the dot. Yeah, I'm a, I will get it. People with the, the perm or whatever, they feel that same way about it. You can call me what you want, but this is how I feel comfortable. So, but here's the thing, though. Now, I, I think that one of the differences is, is that when you're natural, there's a historical connotation to that. Because, you know, and I don't know if this is in the movie, and I was kind of listening behind on you guys earlier. You might have already talked about this. From a historical standpoint, the reason that we pressed hair, the reason that we cut our men's hair shorter uh, right after slavery is because we wanted a simulation. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to appear threatening. And the big afros they thought were kind of threatening. So we, wanted, so we wanted a simulation, and that's why we have the pick with the fist on it, because we, we accepted that threatening look, <laughs> you know, or what white people might consider threatening. But historically, it was because we wanted a simulation into uh, white America. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people look down on now, I think it's more along the lines of, oh, you just trying to fit in. And you're still trying to fit in when we've reached a point where we don't have to. And, but I remind you, it wasn't that long ago. I can remember when I started working at Bank of America, this year was 1995, and they asked me to go talk to another young black lady who had braids because they felt like her hairstyle was too aggressive and offensive. What? And I thought that was crazy. Yeah, we've heard that before. Yes, yes, in corporate yes. America, yes. sending a black America, person to go tell the other black person talk what to, to do. Other black person yeah. about her hair because she was a new intern, I was an old intern. Can you talk to her about yep. uh, the, the hairstyle that she's wearing? Mm -hmm. Because in their point of view, that wasn't promoted. So some, some of our natural hairstyles, even when we're talking 90s, weren't considered acceptable. And so I think a lot of times when we start talking about people with weave and people that aren't natural, we're talking about the fact that we feel as though they're still trying to assimilate. But that may not be the case. It that's, could just be a matter of that's how they feel the most comfortable. I don't knock anybody for that. That's the, I, and yeah, I get it. But there's a historical the, connotation to it, yes. I think which for, is different from being gray because there's no historical connotation to that. I mean, now, and, and I can be, uh, I kind of look down on people because my dad is like 70 years old and he has less gray than I do. And I think that's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's no historical connotation for it. I think there is a historical connotation for when you start talking about putting chemicals and, and certain hairstyles out there. Yeah. I'm going to use a natural dye, though. Are you? Yeah. Hannah. Hannah. Yeah, I'm Hannah. You know what I thought about when you said that they came and asked you to talk to the sister with the braids? I replaced you with Lotus. I was like, what would Lotus say if someone came to her and said, hey, can you talk to the sister over there about her hair? It's not appropriate for this uh, work environment. 
place. Can you fill in the blanks for us? That happened to you, didn't that? Lotus would have got walked out the front door. <laughs> <laughs> well, similar. Um, I'm, but I'm a guy. Actually, because my mom and my family, they embrace, a lot of them embrace natural. My sister has a boy permit out here for years. So I didn't even know there was anything wrong with hair. They're, they're trying to explain it to me. Right, what's wrong with her hair? <laughs> you know, I mean, people in school, I, you know, I went to Samuel High School right here. That's the way sisters were wearing their hair. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anything wrong with it mm-hmm. until they came to me and were talking. I was like, I, I don't understand. I mean, I, and you're talking to a guy who knows so much, so little about hair is utterly ridiculous. So I, I, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> now, my, my experience was um, when I was in corporate America and I was applying for um, just trying to move up the ladder. And <clears throat> I had, <laughs> it's so funny now, I had um, this manager, a black manager, because I was looked over for this promotion. And it's so funny because everybody just knew I was going to get the promotion. And it was just such a done deal. And on paper, there's no reason I shouldn't have. So I went and I talked to this manager, and she was like, well, have you considered perming your hair? That was the last day I worked in corporate America. (laughs) Literally, I'm not even making this up. That was literally the last day I worked in corporate America. I was like, I cannot. Because if my numbers don't speak for themselves, my resume don't speak for itself, my education don't speak for itself. <laughs> but you're concerned about my hair. And I mean, what if I was a sister that I don't even have no I wish I did have cakey hair and I don't. What if I was that sister? You know what I'm saying? I would mm-hmm. never get anywhere. So yeah, I was like, I'm I'm out. Like I literally well I said okay. And I got up, I was so heated, I got up out of that chair. But it came from a very sincere place with her because as a black woman, she knew the struggle of being inside of corporate America. And that was her way of telling me, you know, now had it come from anybody else, it would have been a lawsuit. It really would have been a lawsuit. But I couldn't do that to her. I couldn't have that on her record, even though it would have been against Bank of America, I could not do that to her record because I knew it came from a good space. She knew the struggles of the natural sister in corporate America. And she's just saying, hey, you got all the pieces, but this is really what's holding you back. She's right. in on them conversations yeah. around the, you know, the wider fountain and, and she she she's in the break room with the rest of the seniors and all that kind of she she know what they talk about. So that was her reason for Tell, that was her way of telling me this is really what's holding you up. However, I was not, I'm just not cut like that. I, can, I cannot not be true to who I am. I cannot change who I am for somebody else. I cannot, I will not, I, I, I won't do that. Mm-hmm. And it left me in a very, very, very challenging situation, but I would do it again. Because I do believe that we are placed in position in situations where you have to stand on what you believe in. Because to me, it was bigger than the hair. You're trying to change me, and you're trying to get me to dumb down who I am. Because I was also the sister that, that um, uh, led the... the the black network organization and 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 I wasn't the cookie cutter I wasn't the the Barbie doll black sister with the you know what I'm saying that wasn't me that's not my image so I am the one if it's wrong we gonna deal with it <laughs> well would you look down on someone in your situation that would have changed their hairstyle I would not look down on them I would not judge them but I would definitely feel sorry for them I would definitely feel sorry I for that. I would do all three. I, see, I, I don't know if I would feel sorry. I, I have a friend, and this is one of my best friends, who wore braids. And he didn't have a job, had just had a child, and he was looking for a job. He needed employment. And he was a corporate, wasn't really with the skills to do anything else outside of what he was doing. Right. And he knew he was not going to get a job because he kept going on interview after interview until he cut his braids. That's a different scenario. Cutting braids is different than telling me to put a chemical in my hair to change the texture of my hair. Those okay, are so two. That is a different scenario. Heck yeah, that's a okay. different scenario. Okay. Well, I know that. Because I would tell my son, if, if you, if you try to get a job, you probably need to cut your hair, son. You know what? I, um, you know, schools, 
Well, I want to kind of pose it as a question. What do you think about schools who have these restrictions on how you could wear your hair? Like, I understand that, you know, children get these <laughs> freaky haircuts. Y'all dealt with that in the documentary? Yes, yeah. we talked about it a little bit, but we, we are looking for some younger individuals to talk to about this, but that is... That's why I wanted to bring them in. Yeah. Why don't you can, go you ahead and finish? finish up? Sorry. Well, I mean, well, schools that, like, my son, for instance, his school, his hair is, um... Is uh he had it cut low on the sides, and uh but it's growing out. But he, and his hair in the top, of course, is longer. It's kind of like yours. Mm -hmm. But his um a lady said something to him about his hair, like and, and it's really not that long. At I mean it's like a little fro up there, but it's not extremely long. He mm -hmm. just happened to comb it out one day and went to school, and so I'm looking at him like, well, there's nothing wrong with your hair, son. And he was like, well, boys can't have hair past their shoulders. I said, well, your hair not going to go past your shoulders anyway. It's going <laughs> to, you know, it's going to stick out like a little afro, right? But my question is, is like, how do you, because as, cause as the parent that I am, you know, they try to say something to me about my son's hair. I'm just going to give them the business. That's just what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's kind of like an injustice because... Like, how can you tell my son that his hair can't be... What his hair naturally is. Right. Like, what if I can't afford to cut his so hair? So have you went to the school and talked to them about that and educa educate them on how his hair naturally grows? No. I, I haven't went to the school because it hasn't been a big issue. They mm -hmm. sent him to the office, and she was like, well, yeah, your hair is um, it's getting there, you know, and then <laughs> or something like that. And then he, he didn't wow. comb it for, like, a week or so, and so it kind of curled back up. And, and, you know, when it curls up, it looks smaller. But I haven't had a real issue. It's just that that one part, and it was a black lady, uh, came up to That's her. That's 400 years without a call well, as a black teacher. You know what? I need to probably write her note and say, you need to go watch this after I watch it, of course. But mm -hmm. it's, it's just it was just interesting that that had came up. And so, like, what have you guys experienced in your documentary? Like, what have people said about it? Because... This is becoming more controversial uh, topic just because now people are starting to embrace their natural hair. And on top of that, uh, other people in society don't know, you know, really how to act. And so what we're also doing with the film is we're, uh, we're educating, you know, mm -hmm. at the same time. It's like, hey, this is what African-American black people, this is what their hair really looks like. And we're educating them because they don't know, you know. And yeah. They don't know how to act, you know. It's like, hey, you need to do something with that. But we're educating them so that they know, oh, her hair really looks like that. It doesn't look like this other thing that we've been seeing right. and so and so that's, that's what we want to do we want to promote with uh what these women really truly look like and what the natural hair looks like and we want to promote that positive image and educate them you know yeah and the, the same situation that the, i was thinking i was telling about this in south africa they're not allowing uh elementary girls to go to school unless they uh press or straighten their hair with a chemical and in, in Africa, in the motherland, this is what's going on right now. How that happens, God only knows. But um, this, so, and, and there's been cases in uh, the United States in different daycares and things of that nature where a little girl would wear her hair natural and then, like, she would be, her parent would be called or something like that. Uh, for me, I, 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 I'm kind of, like, I'm like, Lotus on a lot of, especially when it comes to my children. Like, um, you're not, they're coming out. Like, I pulled my children, or we pulled our, our child out of school. We're homeschooling. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you have an issue with my son, then, you know what? Like, at first, I feel like it's my responsibility, but everybody isn't able. You know? And I understand that. But for us, it was just like, I was able to do it, and this is what we're going to do. Because you're not fixing to sit up and brainwash him and make him feel less than or exactly. some, somebody different. Like, mm -hmm. like, he should be somebody different because he's not. He's who he is. So... Um, I feel like that. I mean, like, so a lot of people, they, they, it was daycare situations, so they would move their child to another daycare. I mean, or potentially another teacher or school, but you need, I think that a talk needs to be had. It needs to be addressed. Yeah, for sure. For me, like, anything dealing with self-image or, I mean, his behavior or whatever, I mean, I, I would definitely address it. I think it should be addressed. I don't think that you should, I, this Italian professor told our class a long time ago, um, as you know, in this world, if you don't stand up for yourself, you deserve everything you get. And when he said that, I was 17 years old, I was sitting in that class, and I'm just like, okay, I'm on the right track. Professor yeah. Alessandro, what's I up? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I be standing up so much. I I be telling myself, you need to sit down. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm learning the balance, you know, as well. But when it comes to like my children, you do, I, you, you know? do, mm -hmm. and you have to unapologetically stand on it, and and, and you will stand alone. Often, yep, yep. Yeah, that's often true. you will be by yourself, but you have to be. <clears throat> 
you have to be ready to accept who you are, period. And once you accept who you are, you won't allow anybody. And I don't care. You will lose friends, mm -hmm. relationships, mm -hmm. family members, and you still have to keep standing, period. It, it, I mean, a man who stands for nothing will fall for anything. And that is a very, very, very true statement. Right. And I totally I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm, uh, but, but if, and then like they said too, I, I, it was funny your response <laughs> to that. I don't judge that person, you know, that in your situation, Lotus, that would have straightened her hair, because that may be the only thing she knows how to do. Her mind may be limited on jobs. She may be in an area where she, there's nothing else available, you know. So I don't look down on that sister, but it, this whole movie is supposed to be an inspiration to just put it out there and do our part and let him know like hey maybe she'll get that courage one day to mm -hmm. step outside of that town mm -hmm. go somewhere else where mm -hmm. she is accepted yeah. but for some people like you know mental like you talked about mm -hmm. that mental bondage mm -hmm. some people can't get past that yeah. right you know and I can't talk down about that woman because she's doing what she can for her family mm -hmm. like for me like I had this conversation with one of my friends he said he moved to New York he said he's not coming back to Texas <laughs> yeah you you got to be kind of we are. We're conservative. Said, it's, you know, it's interesting. He said, because I had, he said I had to change the way I talk, the way I look. I had to change my hair. I had to do all these things just to get a paycheck. Yes. You know? And he said, I moved here. I'm not coming back. And it, and I can't be mad at him about it. Mm -mm. Because when you, and that's when you really quit lying to these kids and like telling them, oh, you can reach for the stars, you're going to, you know, you know, you let them know. Like, you know, as far as corporate America, you're going to be dealing with racist people. Yeah, they going to, you know, you know, you know, especially living in the tape, they need to know the truth and how mm -hmm. to like navigate. Mm -hmm. Because, um, I was kind of shocked, you know, I was kind of, you know, slapped around a little bit after graduation mm -hmm. from college. I was like, mm -hmm. how is this possible? Mm -hmm. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I think that the real conversation needs to be had. I think that, you know, you being there uh, supporting him, your son, or whatever. I had a couple of, out my kid, or how long, he was in school for like a semester and a half. I didn't have like three, if that. three uh, meetings with the teacher. Mm -hmm. Like, and why are little black boys always in trouble? It's only two of them. You tell me that they, you know, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, I'm sorry, and, right. and I, I saw a dude, a little, little white boy, just what are you uh, choked out a kid right in front? <laughs> oh, he's just you know, what just just Timmy. Right. Right. he's just, just, Timmy. just strong. Boys will be boys. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just strong. You know, wow. excuse me. <laughs> right. You know, you know. I'm like, I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. it, especially after me and my husband having that conversation, how he always felt like as a child. Uh, like pointed out or feeling like uh, zeroed out like him and his friend were always separated and it was only two of them you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and it was always and then what and, well, can you tell me about that story about what they said the three, uh, the three yeah, kids yeah. it was me and two other guys in it class was, yeah. this was third grade and the teacher was like that was just around the time when Boys in the Hood was out and so she was just like one of y'all are going to be dead when y'all get 20 wow you know you know wow. one out of three will wow. y'all die you know, this is like, this wow. is the school system, this is in Texas. This is the school system that we're putting our kids into. So you got to be cognizant of wow. the environment that you're putting your kids in. And when he told me that, and, you know, with him, because at first my son was coming home with all these, every day it was, it was a problem. He was in, you know, whatever, time out, trouble, whatever. And then, I, you know, I would chastise him and stuff like that. And then when I talked to his older um, aunt, she's in the, she's a teacher. She's like six, over 60, and she was just like, maybe, maybe, maybe it's not him. Then I started looking at it, and I looked at the teacher, and I'm just looking, you know. Then I thought about what he said, and I'm just like, uh, this is not about to happen mm -hmm. on my watch. Mm -hmm. You know, you and my husband's working, so I'm, you know, available when I say that because mm -hmm. we're, you know, it's both of us. But we have to really be cognizant of what's happening to them psychologically. Mm -hmm. Why is it that they're choosing the choices that they're choosing, are they crying out for help? Are the teachers treating them differently? Like, what's going on, mm -hmm. you know? And especially in, in Texas, I mean, you know, it's, you, you know, I hate to, you know, so it's great things about Texas, but at the same time, we have to understand and realize what, where we are, mm -hmm. yeah, you know? I agree. You know, people from California, California, they come here and they're just like, so, Same stand. whoa, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. so. You know what? I, I've never, I, I don't know. I didn't think about Texas. I mean, I'm not from Texas, but I'm from the South. And so I guess that's why it didn't really like dawn on me like that. Where are you from? From Georgia. Okay. Yeah. But I, I saw a difference in people from Ooh, Texas. So it is different. Yeah, from what, did you, what did you see the difference? Oh, I think... No offense to anybody who's from Sorry. Texas. I'm not from Texas, baby. <laughs> from East Texas. Look, the last time, the last time 
my voice, my opinion on what I thought about people from Texas. Oh my God, this lady got so upset with me, like <laughs> fighting mad. I want to know what you think. What you think? <laughs> <laughs> what you think? What you think? I, I think um, Texas people. I, black and white, I think they have this, um, like they feel like they're better. A superior. Yeah, mm. like they're just, like they're just, I don't know, they, they kind of, um, they have this really <laughs> nasty attitude. <laughs> they do. Uh -oh. Not everybody, but the majority, <laughs> like me coming from South Georgia and I'm in Texas, like I felt like they were rude and they were snobbish. And, <laughs> yeah, and they were like kind of self-centered, like they were better. He over there getting irritated. You know that, uh -oh. whole, that whole idea of everything big in Texas, like they really take that to heart. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like it's them. Yeah. yeah, it's all about them. Yeah, and I just, I don't know, I just didn't like the personality of Texans. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've gotten accustomed to it because I've been here a while now, but <laughs> in the beginning, yeah, I really okay. didn't, I really didn't like that person. She just asked me, are you from, where are you from? People just asked me, where are you from? Yeah, yeah. She just asked me that. Not that's a good are you from though. Texas? West Texas, I was, yeah, born in West Texas, and I live in South Irving, but it was diverse. Okay. Yeah. Um, not that first part. That, that, yeah. That makes, <laughs> it makes, I think the race relations stood out to me here. Mm -hmm. The race relations is, is, you know, that's another show. I'm going to save it for an, <laughs> oh my, you have to have Holly back on another show. Yep. Because it's something crazy here. Like, I'm just like, what? And and like, you noticed it most. Man. And my mom, because when she used to, you know, when she used to come home, because we came from Louisiana and she used to work and stuff, she'd be like, you know, tell me all this stuff. But I didn't see it until I got older and I see exactly what it is she's talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, but I say now I'm just intrigued. I want to get in on that. Right yeah, now. like you know, <laughs> she, I know I was such a <laughs> now we bring we bring you that for real because I'm yeah, like, she. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and I'm just like I it's a superiority complex, you know. But <laughs> it's 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 crazy, you know. It's not the camaraderie. Like I don't know what it is. I haven't been in Atlanta, but I met a lot of people from there, and they said they help each other here, like there. And here it's more like it's like a it kind of crab. Yep, I think yeah. every man for themselves yeah. around here. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. and there's no like, hey, you know, we no, it's together. slightly here's different in Houston no. though. It's slightly different in Houston. Yeah, it's a, it's some. I, there's a, a book called White Metropolis. It talks about the history of Dallas, mm -hmm. and you know, and and how it was like everybody worked together, but something happened. You know, in relation to like race relations and the elite and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I think that's a book that we all should explore. So like, when we start looking at the history, it's like, what is wrong? Like, you can't win. Like, that, we went out like recently, and it's like you get like I tell you with the, with the city we moved to, mm -hmm. you get you know bad service from your own people, and then you gotta watch out for it. You know, it's just mm -hmm. weird. I just mm -hmm. I don't get it. I'm, I'm, telling telling you, I, I I think I'm from Texas. I can give you guys a little bit of insight. <laughs> I do believe that there is a certain amount of... He's a very proud Texan, so... Okay. What part of Texas? I'm, I'm from Dallas. Uh -huh. Pleasant Road. Oh, okay. 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 So, I, I do agree, because I, I went four years to stay in Louisiana, and mm -hmm. my first impression of Louisiana was, these people tripping. <laughs> they too nice. Something wrong with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just not used to people being that open and that willing to assist like they were there. And I've come to the conclusion, this is this is just me, and I think it may be different in Houston because mm -hmm. Prairie View is in Houston. But there was a lot of people that, in, in Louisiana, you guys know, you had college-educated people in the early, mid-1900s. You didn't have that in the DFW mm -hmm. Metroplex. Mm -hmm. So that plays a part in it. So when you do have a group that is finally excelling, they just kind of like trying to protect what they got. Oh you didn't gosh. have a group of people that excelled and started bringing other people along with them. Mm -hmm. And that's because they didn't have the college mentality where we were all in this together, doing this together. I'm proud GSU alone. So <coughs> Prairie View, South, Te South Texas, you might have that. But here in this area, you know, we just, it, it just didn't happen for us from an education standpoint. Mm. Uh, that's okay, y'all, that's a different show. Okay. <laughs> you know. I know, I said it is a very good show, though. Yeah. <laughs> we might actually have to visit that very, very soon because mm -hmm. that is a very good show. Yeah. True. But that's so, all. Yeah. Getting back to the national. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we get addressed. It's like we it, it takes it you to colorism. It takes doors. you to a lot of it politics. It starts with hair, but yeah. you've got so yeah. many conversations coming from hair. But that's how important hair is. Like yeah. you see the different avenues that you can go down just with mm -hmm. hair. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important for you to make for you to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways of doing that is by 
<laughs> experiencing, growing up and experiencing and learning how to manage and navigate through your natural hair. Mm -hmm. Like hair, I, I don't know, it just seems like it's the center of all things. Mm -hmm. Well, not all things, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. She's so deep. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. It does, I'm for real though. I think I'm playing with you a little bit, but I was feeling you. I was feeling you. I was over here feeling you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's definitely true because, like, I didn't. If I wouldn't have went natural, I wouldn't have started asking a lot of questions because I, it, it took me off that autopilot mode. Like, you know, every six to eight weeks, this is what I do, mm -hmm. and then I start asking questions. So, if this, why? Okay, so I'm not doing this anymore. Then I start learning the side effects of it, mm -hmm. and like learning, like, why are women, black women, the leaders in fibroids, you know, and, and mm -hmm. breast cancer breast and things, cancer, and, yeah. and they linked. There was a, a study that was linking yeah. fibroids to perms. Yep. And and breast yes. cancer too. Oh wow! Yeah. And so, and then I started looking at that, and I started looking at like all these sisters having uh, issues with fertility. Yeah. You know, and then they start the linking, and then I start digging deeper. You know, so it's like it's the beginning yeah. of of waking up. And I hate to you know sound stereotypical, conscious or whatever, but it's so true because yeah. mm -hmm. once you go natural, you start questioning everything. You do. Everything. Waking up, start waking up. You yeah. know, it is, I did that anyway. That is what it is. Mm -hmm. that is you pay right. attention to, to who you are. Wake up. <laughs> but it does, it makes you pay attention. It makes you want to learn more about yourself. Right. Like you just start paying attention to everything black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then you mm -hmm. start attracting people, and then you start to learn and like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, that's why it, it was it was necessary for me to go natural. Now, the um, children or people who have been natural all their lives. Like, I wonder how they feel. I wonder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, I only met one, two girls, two. Really? Yeah, two women. Well, I think I had maybe, I, I wouldn't say more than four or five years in my life of chemical, mm -hmm. outside of color mm -hmm. in my hair. So natural is almost all I know. Mm -hmm. Not, mm -hmm. you know, I have had an experience, you know, but natural is pretty much what I know and <clears throat> I do think it's empowering I do think that there's a different mentality um, I think and, and, and it could be just because I'm on this side of the track and the, the, the circle that I'm in but from what I see there is more confidence um, and sisters that embrace the natural a little bit more and I think it has to be because you almost have to go against the grain yep. when you first start that journey um, and then there are a lot of people who have these expectations or who associate you know beauty with this that and the other and so if you're not fitting into that mode then you have to tap into your own inner strength um, and not look for that from outside sources. So I do think that there is a level of uh, confidence that the natural system walks in that maybe everybody doesn't. And I'm not, again, you know, sometimes I try to be careful because I don't want people to be offended or... They will be. There's no way to really skirt around it. And yeah. we ask that question at every interview was like, do you feel like natural women have more swag? <laughs> it's like yes <laughs> you know and you just describe it you know because of everything you have to go through in order to achieve that and then when you get that beautiful hair coming mm -hmm. out it's like you know you got mm -hmm. your reward for it mm -hmm. um to answer your question what do women think they've already been natural uh we had a few of those interviews and they kind of feel more like people are just now catching on and it's a <laughs> and, right <laughs> like, doing yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so they had to deal with all the struggles but when it wasn't popular Man. and now that people are catching on it's like oh now y'all want to yeah know, do it. like i've been doing yeah it. exactly so that's, that's kind of the vibe we got from people that have already been natural hmm. and, yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. I was so brainwashed. I remember we had one girl. I was like, "Why does she ever do her hair?" It was just <laughs> big and wild. Like I remember it's thinking that. Like, now you probably think, "Dang, her hair was fly." Yeah, it was. It was like here, but I remember it was just big, and she didn't care. Yeah, like, she was just like <laughs> she was East Coast, right? Hair. She was from East she was Coast. from Louisiana. She was from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's how Naya is. My daughter, it just be like all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was long. It was. It's pretty. a process, mm -hmm. though. Like if you if you haven't been if you haven't had the chance to like grow with your hair and actually have to manage it and do it on your own, like and then you're coming into the natural early, like late in life, 
it can stress you. You know, it can stress you out. Cause uh, you gotta comb it a certain way. You mm-hmm. gotta, you know, sometimes I don't you have even to comb. relearn how to yeah. yes. work with it. Yes. Like sometimes I don't even comb my hair, and mm-hmm. I don't even care. <laughs> like I just pull it out, put a band on it, and I'm good to go. Like and and but when you have natural hair, like there, I bet you, like 99 percent of the women with natural hair don't comb their hair every day. We just don't. But <laughs> and we're not afraid to say it down. <laughs> well, I call mine. I, I'll be like, whoa, <laughs> where did she come from? <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, it is almost ten o'clock, and so this has been a really good conversation. I'm very excited. Can you give us a little bit more about the movie, and okay. when can we expect it to come out? And Okay, that good stuff. So uh, we are, and we have like probably about three more interviews, mm-hmm. and it's a wrap. So, like I was saying before, we have the younger um, generation. We want to talk to them. Uh, also, we're going to talk to a historian, right? We're going to be talking more about the history. We want to add more history in there, um, and that's I'm super. Super yeah. excited. Stay updated on our website, yes. NaturalHairTheMovie.com. Also, if y'all want to, uh, you know, contribute on Kickstarter, anywhere from one dollar to ten thousand, <laughs> um, go there. And the people that uh, contribute to that campaign will be updated because we'll be they'll be included into our private updates, and we'll, they'll be getting consistent updates on okay. what we're doing and where we're at in the process. I want to shout out everybody real quick. I want to shout out. Uh, let's see here, Rondon Williams, uh, Casey Smith. Uh, he actually helped save the film. The revive. He got the first investor check back, you know, too, because we lost all the footage and Lord, it cost oh. money to get it back. All right, and then so the London Williams, Casey, and then we have uh, Michael Grayson, Pablo Contreras, AD. He's a music supervisor. He has some beautiful music that's going to be on there, and then also uh, with Jeremy Stewart as well. So I want to thank y'all so much if y'all listening. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. They've been amazing. It's been an amazing team there. That's true. So, so when it gets closer to time, then we'll have to have you guys come back. And bring yes, the indeed. tea. Yes, yes. Indeed. And maybe we can do some giveaways for oh, some yes. tickets and just okay. help to really promote and That'd get it cool. out there. I love great. that. Mm-hmm. I love that. I'm so excited. Thank I'm you. excited for Thank that. It's amazing yeah. to meet people that's Very really proud doing of that something. Too. Appreciate it. Yeah. Man. I mean, and, and I was, Reginald is a, an amazing leader. I mean, just able to get people to see the vision. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just saying that because I'm um, his wife. Because for a while, I was like, what are you doing? Like, you know, when I finally. Movies. <laughs> right. And, you know, I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, what? What? what, what, what you know? <laughs> Uh, you know, but <laughs> the fact of, of his leadership and actually getting people on board because we had to come up with our own pocket and our own time to put this together. Yeah, we know what that's You know, and now so the, with the Kickstarter is definitely helping, but all of them, this money ain't going to us. <laughs> you know, this money ain't going to us. It's going yeah. into the production. Right. Yeah, so it's just like this has been, I mean, it's been amazing because of the, like, just the teamwork and being able to work with the team and then just the accomplishment. You know, I feel like with this, this whole thing, we can accomplish anything as long as we stay the course and say have our eyes on the goal good so that's good. where we are now good. all right well we're going to wrap it up mm-hmm. that was a wrap up you give me your wrap up sis what you got um <clears throat> my wrap up is more so an announcement because I, I was just looking at y'all and i was just looking at you know just how y'all are like in this thing together and then i thought about the fact that this month is a celebration of black marriages yeah. and um i forgot the and history. women's history yeah and, and women's history mm-hmm. month and um, but I was just thinking about y'all, and I was like, dang, I left my announcement. So next week when I come back, um, I have the information on the black marriage. There's two um, black marriage events that are going on. Well, I won't say one of them is called black marriage, and then the other one is just celebrating marriage. Okay. And so congratulations to you guys for just you know y'all are working together, y'all are doing this together mm-hmm. in business and in family. So yeah. salute you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, that's it. That's all I gotta say. All right. Well, we want to thank you guys that have tuned in. And, of course, you can always catch the replays on the highbymobile.com. And, um, again, thank you to Reginald thank and you. Ashanti. Thank you so thank much. You. And thank I you. really, really appreciate um, you even accepting the call and, and because that is a part of our history. Mm-hmm. And so it is important that we have real dialogue and um, even having people to sit down and watch it and have talkbacks yes. you know about their experiences yes. and, and all of that kind of stuff so that'd be great for mm-hmm. you guys to do that and, and we definitely want to be here to support you um, 
I would have to say that I do think that the natural hair journey is exactly that. It is a journey. It is a lifestyle. Um, it is trending, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it can be a fad, you know, people going through different phases. Embrace it. Um, I, I, I have been really dealing with myself. Um, but what I want to encourage people to do is to not judge each other, but just help to educate each other. So my natural sisters, don't look at your other sisters and judge them for, for having a perm or chemicals or, or anything like that. Um, that's who they are, and, and that's okay. And maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, that's who you were. And so we don't want to judge and alienate each other. Um, just educate, you know, and, and sometimes feel okay with just saying, you know, you're so beautiful and just help them to tap into their inner beauty um, so that we're not so subjected and, and easily influenced by what the world um, gives us as standards for outer beauty. So, but definitely just keep embracing who you are and, and let your journey be your journey. Your journey is not going to look like mine or Solar's or Shante's or Reginald's. It's your journey. So just take your steps and you get there when you get there. Don't judge yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. And if you're looking for information because you're looking to take that plunge or to take that step or to cut it all off and start all over or braid it up or whatever it is that you're looking to do, maybe while you take the um, steps to go natural, then link up with some sisters and, and, and they'll definitely support you in that journey because um, it is a sisterhood. Natural, natural hair brings about a sisterhood. It really does. Mm -hmm. And it's not to exclude anybody. It's just one of those things like, girl, I understand. You know, and I get it. I understand that that wasn't the easiest thing for you to do, and I'm proud of you for being able to jump out there and to to um to say that this is who I want to be. I want to be my natural self. So link up with other people. Get you some support groups. Um, stay plugged in and look for information. The Black of the Berry, as well as High Vibe Media Group, will always have information as far as um, the black community and, and our experiences and we'll keep you abreast as to what's going on with Natural Hair the movie and we'll have tickets available for you when the time comes all that good stuff so that is our show for tonight thank you guys so much thank you for being patient with us we were off for a little while we're going to talk about that soon and, and just things that are going on in the black community and, and health issues that we really need to pay attention to and how those things can alter our lives and, and life insurance and things that we really need to do um, to prepare better in life. And we're going to have conversations about that. And I'm going to warn you up front that it, it'll be a bit of a challenge um, just because of some personal experiences. However, it is necessary. Mm -hmm. And so I do believe that when we go through things, um, it's not for us. It, it is so that we can help our brother and our sister. And sometimes we want to share uh, even some of our hardships so that other people don't have to go through that. So that's what we're about here at The Vibe and at, at um, Black of the Berry. So we will see you guys next week. Tune in on Thursday. We would love for you guys to come out to Brick House Lounge. Our show this Thursday is The Power of the Womb, and it is a very, very important subject. Um, and I'm not sure people are ready for the way we're going to present this. It's not just about sex. And so we have to get our minds out of that and think about the essence of the woman and the black woman uh, specifically. So join us on Thursday for that conversation at 830 at Brick House Lounge in Arlington, Texas. We will see you next Tuesday. Peace. Bye.